So in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to analyze Aldol products in a retrosynthetic sense or in reverse. Let's remind ourselves that with the forward Aldol reaction, so a reaction that'll generate an enolate or an enol, reacting with a carbonyl electrophile generating that new carbon-carbon bond. Okay, remembering the new bond forms at that alpha carbon, and then can be either protonated, and the reaction stops there, or if the reaction uh, continues either in conditions of a protic solvent uh, with heat represented by delta uh, time, or under acidic conditions can eliminate that hydroxyl group and give the conjugated alkene product. In all of these cases, notice that there's a what's called a 1-3 relationship between the substituents in the product. So the main aldol product, one for the carbonyl, two for that alpha carbon, and three for the hydroxyl site. Same thing in the alkene, one two, and three. And that one, three pattern is very characteristic of aldol products. So let's take a look now from the retrosynthetic direction. So now if we are looking at an aldol product, as we are on the left-hand side here, we could look at and realize that there's two oxygen atoms that are one, two, three carbons apart from each other. And that could tell us that that could have come from aldol starting materials. Similarly, if we had seen this 1,3 product in the alpha, beta, unsaturated um, ketone, that also could have come from an aldol product that in turn had come from two different carbonyls. Sometimes those reactants get modified even after they react, and so maybe we had alternatively seen a diol that still seems to have that 1,3 pattern. And so maybe that had originally been the aldol product, and originally that had come from two carbonyls. So the key idea here is to look for that 1,3 pattern to give a hint that maybe it was an aldol reaction that had taken place.